guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about how to lose fat as a petite or short woman. And in case you're new here, when I say petite, petite comes in all shapes and sizes. What I'm really referring to is your height. So if you're five foot four and shorter, or you just identify with being a short or petite woman, and you're trying to lose fat, then this video is for you. So I actually just did a really similar video inside my free Facebook group called the Short Girl Gang Community. Um, if you haven't joined that ever, or you're curious about it, I'll drop a link below. Totally free community. I do live trainings in there, and it's just a great way to meet other and connect with other petite women who are interested in their health and fitness and, and their wellness journey as well. So today's video is all about kicking your metabolism into high gear as a petite woman, which is the key to fat loss for us because petite women have slightly slower metabolisms, which I say all the time, but maybe we need to hear it again. We have slightly slower metabolisms. If you are petite or short and you've ever gone, like typed in the internet, total daily energy expenditure calculator or calorie calculator, and you input all your stuff, and by the way, you probably noticed that height was one of the indicators, one of the factors that you had to input, you probably got back a number, something like 1200 calories, and that's how many calories you have to eat or eat less than to lose weight. If this has happened to you, please tell me about your experience in the comments. If you have clicked on a calorie, calorie calculator and has given you this information back, let me know because it is complete bogus. You do not need to eat that few calories in a day to see progress and, and to lose fat. Yes, you do need to be in a calorie deficit, but your metabolism is dynamic and you can work on increasing that threshold, that caloric threshold, the number of calories you can eat in a day. You can increase that so that you don't have to diet constantly. You don't have to be starving in order to reach your goals. It's the exact same way that I'm able to eat 2000 calories in a day while still losing fat, still building lean muscle and working on my goals because I've spent the time putting that lean muscle on raising my metabolism up and being so that I can be able to eat this many calories in a day. So before we get started, I just want you to know you're not alone. This is very common experience for us petites and I'm here to kind of debunk that myth that you absolutely need to eat that few calories in a day to lose fat. In fact, if you do eat that many calories in a day, that low, you'll probably notice fat gain because it's a very stressful state to put your body in, probably have high cortisol levels, your metabolism is going to slow down. And if this has happened to you from dieting before as a petite woman, also let me know in the comments because these are really interesting phenomenon that occur even though the media and you know magazines and our friends always tell us to do it this way. Well, guess what? They're taller and it actually works a little bit different for us seeing as we already have a low caloric threshold. Okay, so let's just get into it. Fat loss for petites. Step one is your fitness. Of course, if you've looked at the energy balance equation before, you've noticed that your calories in matter and that can be in the form of your food, your nutrition, your intake, and the calories out matter, which is usually in the form of your exercise, how you're burning calories, how fast your metabolism is. So the two things that we have to work with that we have control over are fitness and our nutrition. Let's start with our fitness routine. Sometimes petite women ask me, is it possible to lose fat without going to the gym? Can I just do it through nutrition? The answer is yes, you can. However, if you are looking for a toned look, meaning a little bit muscular, but like lean and cut and not, you know, not stocky, but just you're looking to be toned, you are not going to be able to get that appearance, that look without going to the gym and working on building muscle because that look comes from muscle and fat loss together also known as body recomposition. So if that isn't a priority for you, if you just want to lose a little bit of fat, you could do it alone through nutrition, but I would recommend doing the fitness as well as the nutrition just to kind of give you a holistic lifestyle and help keep your results sustainable. And it's just funner if you can kind of have both elements working in your favor. That said, the fitness element is really important for petite women, especially because if you just do nutrition alone and you don't get the muscle, as a petite woman, you're missing a very, 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 very big important opportunity, which is muscle increases the speed of your metabolism. The more muscle you have, the faster your metabolism is, the more calories you burn at rest when you're not at the gym. Meaning, if you have a higher metabolism, faster metabolism, you won't have to spend as much time at the gym working out, which is ideal, right? So 
you can increase your metabolism by putting on muscle in the gym. And I don't mean like huge, like massive biceps, huge, you know, huge muscles and have it look stocky and ridiculous. No, I just mean once you start lifting weights, you will naturally increase your metabolism because you will increase your muscle tone. And that alone is a really, really important element of the petite metabolism and getting it up and going. So my first tip is if you have not lifted weights yet, to try lifting weights about four or five times a week. You can probably start with four if you haven't done it before and get acquainted with that. Start to start to just get introduced to that world. I have a free guide on a lifting guide. If you're interested, I'll drop that below as well. It teaches you how to lift weights. There's HD videos, it's really great. So the first step is lift weights so that you can gain some muscle and get that metabolism up. Step two, let's talk about cardio. And I'm, I'm gonna bring it up because I don't want you guys to do too much cardio as petite women. A lot of times, if you just were to go on YouTube and type in how to lose fat, it would tell you to do cardio. But as a petite woman, again, special circumstances, metabolisms are slower. So let's talk about what you should do when it comes to your cardio regimen. If you're getting on the treadmill suddenly and you have not done cardio consistently for a while, and you just hop on the, on the treadmill and you decide I'm going to walk for 30 minutes or run for 30 minutes every day, this week to try to lose some fat, here's what's going to happen to you as a petite woman. When you increase your cardio suddenly, you will be releasing, first of all, you could release some stress hormones from that, just increasing your regimen from zero to 100. But the most important thing is you're going to change your appetite hormones and how much hormone is released in regards to your appetite. So if you're doing a lot of cardio, expending a lot more calories in that fashion, your body's going to tell you to eat more because it's hungry and it's not used to it and it wants to replenish those glycogen stores, it wants to replenish that energy source. So if you do a lot of cardio out of nowhere as a petite woman, you are going to get very, very hungry. And in that case, you may end up just having to give in your hunger, eat back all the calories, which starts this kind of negative cycle of trying to burn off the calories that we eat, which is a really unhealthy relationship to have with food because it's just not, it's not fair to do to yourself to eat food and then feel like you need to burn off that number on the treadmill. So the first part is it's gonna throw off your appetite. The second part is cardio is by nature catabolic. So it breaks down muscle tissue, also fat, but if you are doing lots and lots of cardio, you're going to be breaking down your muscle tissue, which as a petite woman is again, the number one most important thing you want to retain hold on to because it's what's gonna be responsible for increasing your metabolism. So cardio is a very, very specific tool for petites. It should be used sparingly, maybe once a week, you can do a 30 minute incline walking session, get your heart rate about 65% of its maximal heart rate, just challenge yourself. But um, overall, cardio can be really detrimental for petite women. It's better to take an approach where you're weightlifting, doing cardio sparingly, maybe doing some HIIT training, and then we'll get into the nutrition next. So on the other end of the energy balance equation, we have our calories in through nutrition and food. And nutrition does play a huge role in our metabolisms. So step three is to take a look at your diet. Of course, right, we want to become aware of what we're eating and be able to analyze it and know what foods are good that promote fat loss. And the best thing you can do for yourself is to keep a food journal for three days and don't analyze it until you've finished your three days. Don't try to change anything. When you get to your third day, take a look at it. Ask yourself, how much of my diet is processed foods? You know a food is processed if it has three or more ingredients in it. If you look on the back of the box and it's a whole huge list of ingredients, if it has complicated ingredient names that you can't pronounce, it's probably processed. The reason why you don't wanna have a diet that's mostly consists of processed foods is because it's going to slow down your metabolism. There's lots of chemicals and preservatives in these foods that add no nutritional value to our diets and they just bog down the metabolism. What you want is nutrient dense foods. The most, the most nutrient, nutrient rich foods are in single ingredient whole foods like vegetables, fruits, minimally processed sources of protein. These are the types of things that are going to do the most on a cellular level for nutrient absorption and metabolism boosting. So take a look at your food and make sure that you know what a processed food is and you're doing what you can to add more single ingredient foods, less processed foods. Along that same vein, you should be looking to to get more protein in your diet if you are already lifting to promote muscle gain and kick up that metabolism. I would suggest, and again, this, this is not my recommendation to you as an individual because I don't know what your 
parameters are for your diet, but what I eat is one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So I'll eat about 115 to 120 grams of protein per day. Step four, look at your hydration. How much water are you drinking in a day? We not only have an energy balance, we have a water balance. And that water balance is really, really important for regulating our body and making sure we're not bloated. If you did your food journal and you found that you were having, you had a lot of processed foods, you're probably having a lot of bloat and water retention because processed foods have a lot of sodium salt in them. So your hydration is really important for not just fat loss, but getting rid of that bloat and just feeling really light when you wake up in the morning. If you've ever woken up in the morning and felt heavy and just pudgy and you can't fit into your favorite pants, it is definitely related to your water retention. You're probably not drinking enough water. I recommend drinking between three and four liters a day minimum. And if you're working out, it's really important. And if you start doing this today, and you try it for seven days and you see the scale drop by three or four pounds, that means that you were dehydrated and you were holding on to water while, you know, for however long in the past. So give this a try and see if the scale changes and if you drop some weight from that. My fifth tip, and this is like a bonus tip, is when you do your cardio sessions, if you do one a week or if you do a HIIT session, the HIIT session should be on its own day, but if you do a low intensity steady state cardio session where you're walking on an incline, I would suggest adding those to the end of your weight training session to maximize the fat burning potential of your body. The reason why is because after a lifting session, your heart is already elevated. And then when you go to do your cardio, your heart will get even more elevated, which will help maximize the fat loss. So if you can, I know you'll be at the gym a little bit longer than you normally would, but it's great to be able to maximize that while you're there and just promote the fat loss right there. Now, I know that you guys value yourself enough to really work on yourself and look at your metabolism as a whole and work on increasing your metabolism over time rather than falling for a quick fix. I think that we, there's so many diets, intermittent fasting, keto, Whole30, all of these. If you're looking to kind of completely change your life in 30 days, you can change your life but if you're going to lose a lot of weight in 30 days, it's probably not healthy or sustainable. And so I urge you to take a look at yourself and just tell yourself, I value myself enough to work on my metabolism in a sustainable way over time so that I'm in a position, it might take three months, but at least three months from now, the time's gonna pass anyways, right guys? You might as well do it the sustainable way. Uh, three months from now, I feel good. I'm not over exercising just to keep up with this state that I that you've achieved through a crash diet. You are eating lots of foods. You're not hungry. You have muscle tone, and your metabolism is increased. So you're eating more than 2,000 calories a day, but still burning fat, right? And again, we aren't looking for just weight loss. We're looking for fat loss. Not we're not looking for only weight loss. Fat loss is what we're aiming for here, so that you can show your hard work, the muscles that you've made. So I just wanna encourage you guys to always look at the longer term route because it's the healthiest one and you will feel better in the long run doing that rather than looking for a crash um, diet or a quick fix. And lastly, if this helps you in any way, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content for petite women. My course, which teaches everything we just talked about, uh, petite power program the doors are currently open for enrollment and there's an early bird price so if you want to reach out and talk to me about this program how you can increase your metabolism as a petite how you can learn how to lift weights how you should eat as a petite that's all taught in this three-month program with me as your coach it's a group program it's super fun and if you want in any more information on that give a comment below I will reach out to you and I hope this was helpful for you guys if you have any questions I'm always here and I hope to chat with you guys soon bye